Your comfort zone may feel like a great place to be, but author Margie Worrell says you need to break out of that zone in order to truly thrive and grow. But this takes bravery. And her new book, Brave, 50 Everyday Acts of Courage to Thrive in Work, Love, and Life, gives tips for developing our so-called courage muscles. Margie joins us now. Margie, it's such a pleasure to have you with us. It's good to be with you. What are courage muscles exactly? Oh, well, look, if you think courage, we often think of this, you know, as a virtue, it's wonderful to be courageous, but really it's, it's a habit. It's something that we can build and develop over time. So the more often we get out of our comfort zone, the more often we do things that scare us, mm -hmm. the more comfortable we get with doing that, the more we grow our confidence and our ability to do more of it in the future. Some people say if something scares you, you should do it, but isn't fear also a natural human emotion yeah. that protects us from yeah. things? Yeah, and look, we, we, we need fear because it helps to alert us to potential threats to our safety. Right. But the problem is, is that often we, we mix up legitimate fears mm -hmm. of ones where things that could really hurt us and, and things that really just may be emotionally uncomfortable. And sure. they might be painful, but really we need to experience those things and risk those things to achieve what we want. And so in our careers, in the workplace, in every area of our life, if we aren't willing to risk that vulnerability, we can really hold ourselves back. And how can we tell the difference between the fears that are legitimate and those that are just in our heads? Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I think to one, get really clear about, well, what is it I want and which areas of my life am I not happy with? You know, in the workplace, um, where is there an issue that's causing me to feel resentful or frustrated or maybe disengaged? Because wherever we're feeling a pain point, generally there's something we need to do mm -hmm. that's going to require some courage to actually address it. And so I think that can really help us to tell, is this an action I need to take even though I'm afraid? Can you give us an example of something that you've done in your life that scared you? And that you're so glad that you did? Yeah, oh, look, I, I could give you lots of examples, but I think I changed careers. I started my career in the corporate world and then I went back and studied psychology at college and, and moved off to become a coach and, and working in the area I am now. And, you know, there was a very certain path that I was on. It was, it was fairly lucrative and I really went off that beaten path, I guess, to go, you know what, I want to do something else with my life that's more meaningful. But I have four kids. I have to say that number four child, you know, can I juggle four kids and a, and a career? That in itself. That's right? amazing. I yeah. mean, you, my hat's <laughs> off to you for that alone. And that's pretty incredible. What is your advice then for people who really want to try something but the fear is holding them back. Do you take baby steps into it or do you just go full Monty? Yeah, well, look, I think it depends on the situation. I mean, not everyone can afford to throw their tail in and say, that's it, I'm going to start my cake right. shop. Yeah. However, ask yourself, what's the cost to inaction to? Because often we have these cognitive biases where we don't judge the risks very well and we tend to downplay or discount the cost of inaction. So once you think this is what I really want to do, make a plan, break it down into small bite-sized steps and just get in action. And maybe it, you might make some big profound change straight away. The most important thing is to get into action because every time we do something that moves us toward a new goal or a direction we want to go, it just helps to build momentum in that area. So, so taking that first step, one step leads to another. Yeah, and I would say do one thing every day. And in my book, the reason I have it, I wrote a book that's 50 Everyday Acts of Courage, not five or ten, is because there are so many different ways we can be courageous in our daily lives. And often we're not even aware of where that fear or that self-doubt is just getting in our way of having a tough conversation. Yes, so, it's, it's very hard to recognise even yeah. in ourselves. Now, we've heard that uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel is a big idol of yours. Can you tell us why you admire her? Ah, oh, well, look, I just... She is a woman who absolutely owns her, her own ability to affect change. She owns her power. She is a woman who absolutely stands on her principles. And, you know, just look, for a woman to have got to her position in itself is, is just shows the strength of her character. But the way she conducts herself with such, I think, dignity, um, she, absolutely she's courageous. She stands up to the likes of Putin who try and intimidate yes, her. Yes. And I think just, just, frankly, I think women, we struggle a bit more with self-doubt. So to see a woman hold such a position of power with such grace, such dignity, and with such strength, I think is just... Who, who wouldn't admire Angela Merkel? <laughs> that is so true. And we admire you as well. Margie, thank you so much for being here with us today. Pleasure.